Well, I, I believe that billionaires should pay um, rates that are um, not lower than what a teacher or firefighter pay. Okay. I, I think that Tim, I, I didn't, I, I said that I feel like Tim Lee. We've got a lot to talk about today from inflation to your grocery bills to the banking crisis that's going on, UBS taking over Credit Suisse. And what I did mainly was I took the Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen's congressional testimony. And it was three hours long and a lot of it was boring. I took all of that out and I took out some parts that I really want you to see that are very relevant to build the economy right now that you are dealing with. Does the president know personally anybody who is dependent upon Social Security and if their benefits are cut by 24 percent, they will slide into poverty? It's hard for you to know. Uh, so I'll give you a password. The president knows many people like Social Security. Then why doesn't the president care? He cares very deeply. Then where is his plan? He stands ready to work with That's people. a lie. For many of you, it's your first time here. My name is Peter Leeds, and along with my entire team, we publish the world-famous Stock Pick newsletter. We've been in business doing exactly this for over 25 years, and we've got subscribers from six different continents. You also said that inflation was transitory, and it certainly isn't, and I think Chairman Powell certainly now agrees with the fact that you know, we've got something going on here that's going to take a very long while unfortunately to ring out of our system that's not my question you believe we can spend our way to lower inflation and i'm going to move on obviously i've never said the oh, okay. i've never said that i think that all right that's a thank you to lower inflation um, you and i dedicate this video to janet yellen who said we will not have another financial crisis in our lifetime which is so ironic to watch her testify to congress about another current financial crisis that we're facing but one problem, the mental problem, is that unless Congress raises the debt ceiling in the next few months, the U.S. Treasury and agency securities will face the prospect of default. Now, while I certainly won't vote to default on the debt, I think some of my colleagues may not feel the same way. It's not that the American people are taxed too little, it's that the federal government continues to spend too much and spend too, and, and incur too much debt, which in turn creates this unvirtuous cycle. Meanwhile, you're finally seeing gold starting to get some love that it's deserving of. The most unloved asset going was gold, and now it's starting to turn around. Gold prices went up almost another $100 per ounce on Friday, in addition to the other $48 in a day that it went up a couple days before that. Gold is finally starting to roll, and now there's a little bit of a delay, but the gold mining companies that we talk about in the PeterLeads.com newsletter, not all gold mining companies, but the ones that we talk about in the newsletter that are gold mining companies, they are starting to really drive higher in share price. And I always tell you guys when gold prices are going down, I always say, just wait, just wait. And people, I, I get it, people panic when gold prices drop a lot. You say, well, is this a bad investment? I'm in the wrong spot here. And I always tell you, just wait. And I'm going to tell you that in reverse. Gold prices are starting to track higher. People are saying, should we take out some early profits or start selling some of the gains we're making? I'm saying, and this is not advice for you. It's not personalized financial advice. It's just an opinion. I think it's crazy to sell your gold mining companies now. Nothing in this video is intended as personalized trading advice for you. There's a lot higher it's got to go yet, you'll see. So I'm going to tell you guys, if you're thinking about taking profits, just like when prices are going down with gold, I'm telling you, just wait. There's more upside to come, lots of it. And if you want the gold mining companies that we like the most and the prices to buy them at and what price we're thinking they're going to go to and in what time frame, that's all in the Peter Leeds newsletter. So check it out if you're interested in that and all sorts of other companies too, not just gold miners, but, but technology companies, medical companies. We're trying to find these companies when they're still small before they increase dramatically in price. Do you know that off the top of your head? Um, it looks like I'm right at $17 trillion, okay? Yeah, but uh, you're going to drive the debt from somewhere around $32 trillion up to about $50 trillion, correct? Yes, but what, what I believe is the single most import, important metric for judging the fiscal stance of the country is real net interest as a share of GDP. We have, so, so are you concerned when you, when you take the debt from $32 to $50 trillion, are you concerned who's going to buy that debt? And also, at what rate they don't expect to be compensated for buying riskier and riskier debt. Are you concerned about that? Well, if the net interest, real net interest cost of the debt remains low relative to GDP and we're on a sustainable 
physical we're, we're not we're not we're not well, and we're also going to show you a couple of charts from trading economics and the data from that is coming from the u.s department of labor and i'll show you what's going on with the inflation rate and more importantly the one that matters to you more that's the prices you're seeing on the grocery store when you buy a loaf of bread. How much is that going up? That's what really matters. There's a lot of different reads and metrics of inflation. But I'm saying the overall trend, even for those prices, is pulling them lower. And this is when I was telling you that inflation is not going to go higher. It's going to go lower first. And I'm working on a video right now about the big inflationary bounce because inflation will go dramatically higher, but not yet. Being from Tennessee, you know, we have a long storied history of opposing, nationalizing the banking system. Do you see this as a step to nationalize the banking system? Absolutely not. I see okay. this as a step toward stemming contagion that could come okay. from the failure of these banks that would place uh, community banks okay. across the country at okay. any risk of runs as well okay. as if we want to um, Thank you, ma'am. Let me move to the Inflation Reduction Act. And it's time to start watching this, and I'll keep an eye out for you if you subscribe to the channel. It's time to start watching this to position yourself or prepare to position yourself for the most gain as some of these things happen. For example, when the Federal Reserve pivots eventually, not yet, I don't believe it'll be this week either, but when they do eventually signal that they're going to be coming closer to pivoting, that's going to be dramatically good for gold in addition to the gains in gold prices we've already seen. But there's a time to deal with this and act on it. It isn't yet, but it's soon. And there's also a lot of opportunities now too where a lot of stocks are coming down so much and when the Fed pivots and they start just fueling more monetary creation and pushing up the inflation, pushing up stock prices, house prices, that's all going to happen. Oh, if we ended up with a slightly higher interest rate environment, it would actually be a plus for society's point of view and the Fed's point of view, end of all. Since that time, inflation hit a 40-year high, and the Fed has responded by aggressively hiking interest rates. As a result, families and small businesses are paying the price by way of higher interest rate costs for home loans and business lines of credit. Moreover, bank failures this past week highlighted how fragile our economy is given rising interest rates and decades-long inflation. So do you still see our inflation-driven interest rates hike as, using your words, a plus for society? I consider high inflation um, the number one economic problem that all of us need to face and address. It's the president's top priority. And of course, we need all of your support to be able to get you more videos like this to help you out. And the best way to do that is join the Peter Leeds Army. And it starts for as low as $3. Any support you guys give us, we can give you more and more videos. We're working so hard behind the scenes here for you guys, the entire team. To be fair, you weren't the only person who forecast transitory inflation. The chairman of the Federal Reserve, Jay Powell, did the same as did the president of the United States. We now know that inflation rose to a level not seen in more than 40 years, and that inflation accelerated, particularly following the enactment of the partisan American Rescue Plan Act in 2021, and then with the so-called Inflation Reduction Act in 2022, which together added $2.6 trillion to our national debt. Obviously, all the stimulus going into a constrained economy with supply chains, uh, the way they were, uh, workforce levels down, obviously created uh, was like pouring gasoline on the inflation fire. Well, it's clear that Social Security... But is he, I apologize for interruption, but I have limited time. Is the president aware that when Social goes broke in nine years, under current law, there's a 24% cut in benefits for people who are currently receiving? If we don't do anything about it, I think that's about right. But okay, the answer. president will want, wants to strengthen Social Security. And the $4.5 trillion of taxes the president has proposed, are any of those taxes going to shore up Social Security? I actually know that answer. The answer is that the $4.5 trillion in taxes he has proposed, not a dime, is going to shore up Social Security. These bank failures were the direct result of policymakers' decisions of the last five years beginning with the 2018 law signed by President Trump with the support of both parties to weaken the regulations that have been put in place after the 2008 financial crisis to ensure that big banks never again crashed our economy. If Treasury followed this Republican plan, bearing in mind that China holds about a trillion dollars in U.S. debt, who would get paid first, China or seniors receiving Social Security and vets receiving VA benefits? Well, if that were prioritized, China would get paid um, ahead of them. We, we believe, I believe, that prior, prioritization of payments, as you said, is default by another name. We need to pay our bills. We need to pay all of our bills. That um, willingness and commitment to be um, responsible in paying bills that have already been incurred is what underlies the United States' strong credit rating and um, 
credit rating agencies like Fitch have already weighed in that if we were to fail to pay um, any of our bills, that that would call into question whether or not we deserve um, our current our current credit rating. And you know, it's simply a recipe for economic and financial catastrophe to think we can pay some of our bills and not all of them. Last weekend, Signature Bank failed. The other bank that failed, Silicon Valley Bank, you know, here's what they had to do to fail. They had to not observe the fact that their balance sheet had basically tripled over you know some period of time. Not observe the fact that they were in a you know you know in a volatile high tech industry where the the tide comes in and goes out for all those tech companies at exactly the same time, which is what we're seeing today. They had to make a decision to lay on ten year paper with ridiculously high interest rates, and they weren't even that high, but compared to I'm sorry, low interest rates compared to the interest rates that we were about to be challenged by the Fed. And I can tell you, unless somebody around here does say I don't know, Jay Powell wasn't exactly secretive about what he was doing with that. They had to get that through their board, they had to get that through that audit committee, and somehow they had to get that through a regulator, I guess, who was looking over that, who wasn't saying, this is insane what they were doing. Well, he has proposed explicit increases in tax rates on very high income. But do you think it's realistic that he can pay for Medicare debt and deficit and also address a 75% shortfall in social, 75 year shortfall in social, by only taxing, by only going, the only thing he's gonna do is to lay higher taxes on those who make more than 2%. I'm sure there's a projection of how much those rates would have to be. Do you, can you tell us what those rates would have to be to do everything you're saying? Do you agree with the president that we need to strengthen our banking rules? Well, I think we certainly need to analyze carefully what happened that triggered these bank failures and re-examine our rules and supervision and make sure that they're appropriate to address the risk that banks face. So what would the rates have to be on that 2% of Americans who earn over 400 k in order to do Medicare, the debt and deficit, and also to address our 75 year shortfall in Social Security? Do you have any sense of what the rates would have to be? Last weekend, Signature Bank failed, and almost a fifth of its deposits came from crypto. Like, they're not allowed to do anything with marijuana, but apparently they can lay 20% of this on, on crypto. A notoriously unstable, you know, a thing that nobody here even understands. And where the value of the assets can store and collapse. We've seen that in this sector. Uh, you said that inflation has many causes. I agree with that. By the way, I would say the number one economic problems are debt and deficit. And I would say that the top three causes of inflation are massive deficit spending, uh, the war on fossil fuels, which have driven energy, gasoline prices to record levels, uh, obviously supply chain dislocation, that was caused by our miserably failed in, 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 in incredibly stupid response to COVID. The pandemic. But would you agree those are the top three causes of inflation? Uh, deficit spending, high energy costs, and supply dislocations? I don't believe that deficit spending is one of the main causes you of don't? inflation. Well, you know, no matter how strong capital and liquidity supervision are, if a bank has an overwhelming run that's spurred by social media or whatever so that it's seeing deposits flee um, at that pace, um, bank can be um, put in danger of failing. Of course, there's backup liquidity, there's the Fed's discount window, um, but this is really can be a threat to banks. And one of the reasons we um, intervened and declared a systemic risk exception is because of the recognition there can be contagion in situations like this. And other banks can then fall prey to the same kinds of runs, which we certainly want to avoid. Of course, interest costs to service this debt uh, would reach about a trillion dollars annually. Our ability to defend our country in an increasingly dangerous world would be diminished because we'd be spending more money paying interest to the bondholders rather than paying to keep the American people safe. It seems to me that from a supervisory standpoint, if your job is to examine banks, that's something that you kind of have to be there to do. Will the deposits in every community bank in Oklahoma, regardless of their size, be fully insured now? Are they fully recovered? Every bank, every community bank in Oklahoma, regardless of the size of the deposit, Will they get the same treatment that SVBP just got or Signature Bank just got? A bank only gets that treatment if a majority of the FDIC board, a supermajority, a supermajority of the Fed board, and I, in consultation with the president, determine that the failure to protect uninsured depositors would create systemic risk and significant economic and financial consequences. So you said, quote, our stress testing regime is forcing banks to greatly improve their risk management and capital planning, end quote. But you warned that because, quote, 
we can never be confident that there won't be another financial crisis. It is important that we maintain the improvements that have been put in place that mitigate the risk and the potential damage, end quote. So I want to talk about those stress tests that you talked about, how important they were six years ago. If we were to double the debt to GDP ratio, yes. um, I, I don't see why we would need But if we did, just just as an economist, if we did, what would be the effect on the economy? Well, we tend to raise net interest costs. Would it be a negative effect on the economy? Of course it would be. Of course, yes. Yeah, of course it would be. Uh, we actually modeled this. For the president to do nothing, let's assume that we cast aside current law and we just double the national debt, and that's what it would do. Um, it would have a devastating effect upon the economy. CBO says they cannot model the deleterious effects that would occur because of that. So what is your plan to keep large depositors from moving their funds out of community banks into the big banks? We have seen the mergers of banks over the past decade. I'm concerned you're about to accelerate that by encouraging anyone who has a large deposit in a community bank to say, we're not going to make you whole, but if you go to one of our preferred banks, we will make you whole at that point. Um, well, I mean, we're, that's certainly not something that we're encouraging. That is happening right now. Uh, welcome, uh, Secretary Yellen. Uh, I just want to start, did you know how much a dollar that you held at the start of the administration in January 2021 is worth today? Well, we've had inflation and it's declined in its purchase. It's, it's worth 87 cents. In your testimony, you said that inflation is the number one economic problem. Uh, do you know what the inflation rate was at the start of the Biden administration in January 2021? It was substantially low. It was 1.4 percent. I, I can't tell you that, but I do know that he's put on the table many proposals that would raise very substantial revenues. But of that 4.5 trillion, not a dime is going to social. And if you not, if you cannot tell me, I presume that they've not actually modeled what those rates would have to be, which tells me that he's actually not been developing his plan. Now, this is incredibly worrisome from a president who should be sympathetic with someone who under current law is going to get a 24% cut. The president feels is completely committed to protecting seniors who rely on social security. Now, if, if I continue to endorse the comments Good. you quoted, I think this has been one of the most important and consequential improvements in supervision since the financial okay. crisis. So, but two thumbs up for stress test. Let me just ask. When regulators spot these problems early on, can those regulators then require the banks to clean up the problems long before they trigger a run on the bank? Yes, and in that sense they're useful, but I would like to make one point, sure. which is that the supervisory stress tests focus on capital yes. and not on liquidity. And in these bank failures, um, liquidity played an important so, role. So let's that is happening because depositors are concerned about the bank failures that have happened and whether or not other banks could also um, no, it, fail. It's happening and because you're fully insured no matter what the amount is. If you're in a big bank, you're not fully insured if you're in a community bank. Well, you're not fully insured. And you, you they, were at Signature and it, was, they, it just barely met that threshold. You were at Signature. Well, we felt that there was a serious risk of contagion that could have brought down and triggered runs on many banks um, and that's something given that our judgment is that the banking system overall is safe and sound um, depositors should have confidence in the system and we took these actions so there's a special assessment that's been done on community banks in my state and all banks across the country is it true that um, the federal deficit has been reduced by over 1.7 trillion just in the last few years Yes, that is true. And it's also true what you said earlier that this budget proposed by this administration looks at also at an additional deficit reduction of three point trillion years over 10 years. That is correct. So this administration is concerned about reducing the deficit, correct? Yes. And that meant that a bank like SVB, which had $209 billion in assets when it failed, would be exempt from annual stress testing. Regulators are now forecasting that they plan to increase regulations on the rest of the banking industry. In other words, the banks have made responsible business decisions and have not failed. I mean, inflation is too many dollars chasing too few goods. Well, when you're printing all this stuff, so you know in the first three fiscal years of my administration, you know how much the total deficit spending is going to be? We had um, an economic collapse that was caused by... Right, the and we were, we were certainly coming out of that because there's all this pent-up demand and it's sloshing around trillions of dollars. 
So I'll answer that question for you too. The first three fiscal years of this administration, the total deficits would be about what, $5.7 trillion. It has been reported publicly that uh, SVB had a large number of Chinese investors that are there, including some that were companies directly connected to the Chinese Communist Party. It, will, will, those individual, will those individuals, companies, entities, and investors that are Chinese investors be made whole based on assessments in my banks in Oklahoma? So what I'm asking is, will my banks in Oklahoma pay a special assessment to be able to make Chinese investors whole from Silicon Valley Bank? Uninsured investors will be made whole in that bank. I suppose that could include foreign and foreign depositors. Enhanced liquidity requirements that ensure that banks have enough cash on hand to meet their obligations, particularly in times of stress, capital requirements that better position banks to absorb losses, regular resolution plans to help guide regulators safely through winding down failed banks. All of these were weakened in 2018 and when SBB failed, uh, this is a part, in my view, of the Fed's actions that led to weaker regulation. If we do nothing, and the Social Security Trust Fund runs out 2023 to 2025, about the end of the budget period, are you concerned about, are we going to have the financial wherewithal to plus up benefits to honor those promises? I mean, you, you think we're going to, with $50 trillion in debt, you know, debt succeeding uh, our GDP, aren't you concerned about our inability to honor those promises? For, for 2023, we assumed that inflation would run at 3%. At 3%. And and we're in the, uh, the tail end of March. Uh, so you still believe, given the inflation estimates that we got, that that's still a valid assumption? It is coming down on a 12-month basis. And yeah. Okay, um, and my community banks are going to pay this additional fee. It is always fascinating to me as well, the conversation that taxpayers are being made whole in this. So taxpayers are not going to have any kind of consequence on this. I'm sure my bankers are going to be very excited to know they no longer pay taxes. Uh, and their banks no longer pay taxes. Credit unions don't pay taxes. Banks do. And so they're definitely taxpayers as well. And all banks make their revenue off of rates and fees and such to their account holders, which means every Oklahoman will pay higher fees in their community we're, bank. We're just going to have we to move on. We have of the banking system and its economic consequences that will have very severe effects on banks in Oklahoma that will also be threatened. I'm just worried about the long term. We are going to have to move on. We're not going to get all senators in. Senator Cortez and that's done. Not only you, but the direct OMB director, Young, and members of the other side keep talking about uh, you're cutting deficits. Uh, the deficit in 2021 obviously was high because of the pandemic. But 2022 is about 1.4 trillion. 2023, we think it's going to be about 1.6 trillion. 2024, you're uh, projecting 1.85 trillion, and again, growing debt by that it never drops below 1.5 trillion dollars. How can you how can you claim you're cutting deficits? Well, it always is a comparison with the baseline of what would happen if our policies I mean, were not enacted, and the increase in deficits would be larger. Um, there is net re deficit but, reduction, but, but, but Congress handed Chair Powell the flamethrower that he aimed at the banking rules. In fact, he said so himself, I'll quote and then I'll quit. When he announced that he was weakening regulations for the banks like SVV, Chair Powell said, and I quote, in the rules before us, we are applying the discretion granted to us by the Economic Growth Regulatory Relief and Consumer Protection Act. Translation, Congress opened the door to weaker, weaker regulations and I'm waltzing right through it. That's true, Congress needs to close that point. Will our Office of Tax Policy drafts Regulations okay, so and to go through a regular rulemaking. I do sign off on it and file so. with many, okay. many uh, people Thank in the you. process of drafting that, and it will go through full comment and review before right. final. Let me ask you something else. In light of the events in the financial system over the past week, how damaging would a debt default be to our banking sector, particularly to regional banks? It, it would be completely devastating, and I don't think that Congress should, for a second, contemplate the possibility of not raising the debt ceiling to pay our bills. This is the cornerstone of um, what, what makes our uh, financial markets the soundest and best in the world, and people uh, trust 
that the government stands ready to pay its bills. Policies embedded in the two trillion dollars of spending, which then led and accelerated inflation to a 9.1% or a 40 year high. The Fed response to the high level of inflation was at eight rate increases leading to a liquidity challenge that we are now seeing the, the results of. Thank you very much. And right here is a video, a new kind of debt ceiling. You definitely want to check it out because we're approaching the debt ceiling debacle. And right now, and in that video, it talks a lot about the protests in France that were building up. And now they're all exploding across France because of the change in the retirement age. That's what that video, that part of that video was about.